Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, episode. We have a, a fantastic guest. Uh, let me just introduce my, my uh, beloved guest, Darius Lautifar. Uh, Darius is a serial tech entrepreneur with two exit serial best-selling author. He's also an educator uh, and his last book is a great, uh, great book. We'll talk about it today. Uh, thank you, Darius, for being my guest today. Thanks, thanks a lot for, for accepting this, this episode with me. Thank you very much, Ari, for inviting me. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Thank you very much. Um, let's say, um, because today is totally devoted to, to, your, to your last book. Let, let me show it on screen. Leadership by Cyrus the Greed, Unlocking uh, uh, Xenophon's Cyropedia. Sorry, for, I, will, I will share the, I will share the, the better, better picture later. Uh, this book is very important uh, because it's uh, the root, the ultimate root of uh, leadership. And it's not easy to, to decipher it, to, un to encrypt you know, the, the complex writing of Xenophon and bring it to, to modern leaders. With a with an with an accessible style, so we will talk about it. It's a very important mission that you have accepted to 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 do it on your on your time for for the good of everyone. So thank you again for for this and and but but we will deep dive into it. Uh, just before we start uh, talking about the the book, I would like to to know you better uh, and talk about a little bit about your backstory. Who are you? Where are you from? And what is your journey before uh, becoming the man who you are, who you are today? Are you, uh, do you agree with, with this plan? Absolutely, with pleasure. Um, I was born in Iran, um, raised mostly in Iran. I was uh, a teenager when I moved to France, mm -hmm. uh, to Paris. Um, I was a more uh, kind of bilingual uh, English-Persian, so France was not... Uh, planned to be in in my journey uh, but the uh, events in uh, uh, 78 79 uh, back in Iran um, and the uh, you know hostages uh, in the uh, uh, in the in Tehran uh, US embassy closed UK embassy closed uh, I landed in in Paris and uh, and I loved it um, I made my life basically in in, in France. Uh, I went to the uh, Ecole um, Ecole Centrale, class prépa. The uh, for those who are familiar with the French system of um, engineering uh, schools, <clears throat> I went to that uh, to that system. I I was I was good uh, in math. Uh, I was highly ranked. Uh, not not to say first. Uh, <laughs> Both in Tehran and in the engineering school, um, uh, so math was a pleasure always. Uh, I ended up uh, uh, being a robotics engineer uh, within the uh, French system, meaning that uh, for those who are familiar, the French system is a generalist engineer. So you, they, you it's, it was called robotics engineer, especially at at Ecole Centrale, which is now called Centrale Supérieure. Um, it, it, it meant that uh, we were doing, you know, in, in our projects, we were building homes, engineer uh, uh, genie civil and uh, civil engineering, for instance, or electronics, we were building cards and so on. So um, that's, um, that's what I did and uh, got married, kids, uh, uh, started working a few years as, um, as a robotics engineer uh, in pre-sales and, and and technical support and development. Uh, I resolved a few problems uh, of uh, welding robots, programming in, in naval construction and things like that, and uh, realized that um, I, 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 I am a key factor in the negotiations with the customers because I'm the one who solves the problems and the, the sales guys were getting the money. So I said, I want to go to sales. I, I, <laughs> thanks, thanks for thanks for this uh, explanation, but you are going a little bit too fast. I want to dig a little bit okay. more into into your life. What was your family environment when you were a child? Uh, do, was your parents uh, scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs? How how was your 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 let's say your your normal life when you were a child or, or teen? Yeah. 
middle class uh, Tehran family, uh, no entrepreneurship. My, my uh, grandfather, one of uh, my, um, on the mother's side, my grandfather was a military and, mm. and very successful starting from nowhere, uh, a, a, from a village uh, uh, north of Tehran and, and becoming a, a successful and, and a wealthy man. Uh, my parents uh, were middle class, um, uh, a uh, public servant. My, my dad was a public servant, so not at all entrepreneur. Um, and by the way, one of the things, uh, since I was a good student, uh, they couldn't understand why I was not uh, continuing to get a PhD because in the, in the Persian families, if you're not a doctor, you're no one. So, <laughs> so uh, and the anecdote is that I actually uh, uh, registered. Uh, I, I signed up uh, for the PhD after after Ecole Centrale, so that my parents uh, keep being happy. And uh, I was taking some courses on the side, but I was actually working at a at a company called Schlumberger, which is a um, Franco-American uh, six billion dollar company, not very well known. And the reason I went to Schlumberger is because I was still hoping that I could return to Iran. And Schlumberger was and probably is still uh, the only Western uh, company who uh, uh, is uh, working in, in Iran uh, because they absolutely need it. And Schlumberger is the type of company who is uh, very discreet and and. Uh, and just focuses no politics and just focuses on uh, on on the uh, on the oil uh, services that um, they need to anyway so that's that's why i <clears throat> i went to to Shambhaji. so back to the family um nothing in my family now the thing which is uh, uh, very important is that um uh, my dad was a big believer and that has a relation to the book uh, my my dad was a big believer in education, mm. and um, and so uh, he he sent me to uh, a school in Tehran called Andishé, which is a Salesian's uh, school, uh, mm. an international school, um, highly graded, and where my environment uh, from childhood was a very international, multi-ethnic, multi-religious environment. Uh, the, the school was uh, run by uh, Christians, uh, Catholics, uh, priests, and um, <clears throat> and the uh, education was not necessarily uh, religious. You had the choice to go with a um, uh, um, secular or laic uh, education or the religious Catholic one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I grew up with uh, Christians, with uh, Jews, with uh, Muslims. Uh, and with uh, peoples from different nationalities obviously uh, the majority was were iranians but uh you know kids of expats uh, were also there um and we had uh two hours of english from uh, grade one so that's why we were bilingual uh finishing school so that was my father's vision of education later a few years ago only i discovered that uh, the the budget the um, uh, the fees the scholar fees that they were paying was a an important part of the uh, family budget. That's mm. really a sign how much uh, they considered uh, education as important. So the, a lot, they made a lot of sacrifice to to offer you the best uh, education possible. Yeah, this is very ironic uh, trait, you know, for. Yes. Yes. Uh, and Jewish also, the Jewish family, we, we are very, very connected with these people and, and everywhere we put our feet, we build schools, you know, it's, it's yes. a, Jewish and Iranian is, are known to build schools everywhere they put their feet, so <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's not just a, a stereotype, it's true. Um, yep. Yep. It's, it's, it's fantastic what you, what you said about, you know, um, you know, the, the, the fact that you registered into a PhD program because uh, because how much it was important for your family and um, oh, is um, when you were young, uh, what was you already uh, interested by the ancient history of Iran and how this history nurtured your you during your life or is it something that that came pop up in your mind later <coughs> in, in when you were adult? 
I, I was a nerd, uh, but on those those years, uh, as a teenager, I was more into uh, figuring, uh, you know, uh, religion, God, existence, non-existence, philosophy. And of course, uh, the history was uh, extremely important. Um, but maybe at the time, because under uh, the uh, regime of the Shah, uh, we had more access to uh, uh, to the um, ancient Iranian uh, history and, and, and culture. It, so I, I don't think I was very different than the um, average, uh, let's say, uh, teenagers who were interested in in uh, in, in in learning. I, I definitely was above average in terms of interested in in learning, but I was more into math. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember I was uh, um, and math as a passion, uh, mm -hmm. not because of the uh, stories. I had a lot of extra uh, scholar books in math. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them I, I always mention is playing with the infinity Bozi Bobi Nahoyat, playing with infinity which is uh, still in in my mind and in uh, and and i believe it has a connection with uh, the free will versus uh the uh determined um um faith uh and 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 i and i have a theory myself which has a connection which is a proof the existence if we understand infinity then then we have some beliefs uh which uh are are defined uh or derivated from there but that's uh, a conversation for another day could be a very passionate one by the way uh, to talk about this uh this vision also uh, what, what is also important for me is to understand uh, the obstacles, let's say, even the enemy you encounter during your path. And did you have also a kind of mentor who helped you and guide you and, and get you the, 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 the path you have to follow? Uh, could be during, uh, during uh, the high school era, during the, the, the engineering school era, or even later? No, I would say I was um, uh, impressed by a few uh, people. Uh, uh, one of them was the author of this book, uh, Playing with Infinity, who, who happened to be our teacher since we were a uh, highly ranked school. Uh, Parviz Shahriri was our teacher. So uh, I, I, I was lucky to have interactions and discussions with him. So, um, But that was limited to uh, to to the vision of uh, of math and and the uh, and the link between uh, mathematics and and philosophy. Um, later in my career, well, well later uh, actually, when uh, one of my startups, I um, uh, had a board member who, who became the board member who was mentoring me was uh, another. Um, uh, graduate of uh, Ecole Centrale, uh, Jean-Pierre Germont, and uh, he was much older than me. He was even older than the age of my my dad, uh, and he was retired. But he was the person who uh, transformed um, a, 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 a small uh, entity uh, of uh, Saint-Gobain into, into Saint-Gobain, into $6 billion uh, group within 23 years and um, the thing that uh, in, in terms of business where we had big connection was um, engineers who were passionate uh, by sales and that's that's very present in my uh, career in my previous book in what I'm doing right now um, uh, very often uh, uh, engineers are overlooking sales they they consider that it's uh, you know uh not very valued job uh, <laughs> uh and uh and, and, let, and let, I, let, me, let me stop you right now because it's uh it's a it's a very general trend between scientists and engineers they hate marketing and sales and one time i you know my job is to do marketing for science and technology and one time a, a great scientist told me doing marketing or say it's a treason to the cause <laughs> I, I know absolutely uh so uh and 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 i even uh, would uh, um insist on sales versus versus marketing of course marketing 
is a, a foundation is is an environment which uh, is needed in sales and helps sales but at the end of the day and 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 the americans and one of the things that um, uh, are in in the attraction in the us versus europe which explains my second migration from from europe to the us mm. is this saying uh, in the us which says uh, nothing happens until you send something to someone and uh it's and this this too has its root back in the ancient times um i i haven't yet found something strong with the persian culture but uh with the with the greeks aristotle you know the art of persuasion uh rhetoric uh it's it's the first uh sales uh book in, in history where he explains uh how to convince people how to convince and and it is you know it's it's the beginning that's why nothing happens if you don't sell something to someone if uh, i'm not convincing people that uh cyrus uh, books is worth uh reading uh, there is uh, n nothing will happen there is no Ab point. absolutely and by the way if if only alexander the green didn't burn you know the library of of, of persepolis maybe today we will know that uh, we will have much more information about how the Persian and the Iranian were good at commerce and because you know you have you have this fantastic beautiful first name Darius but Darius the Greek one of, one of the descendants of Cyrus he built the the Silk Road what is the Silk Road is uh, a, a chamber of commerce of ancient times no they, they he put a ch chamber of commerce all along the way from China to, to the to the to the to the to the west, and they secured the commercial way of the of the of the travelers all the, all along, and this is very important. And you know there is a there is a stereotype saying that Iranian are a carpet merchant, you know, marchand de tapis in French, because it's true. We have this uh, this in, in this behavior and this this easiness for commerce in our in our DNA. Uh, but we have lost, you know, the trace of uh, of, uh, of of that in the ancient times, and um, this is exactly what you said about about, um, about. So, so you had in you this call from bringing your your expertise in science and tech into the world of business. Is that yes? Follow you. I had no idea I had it uh, until uh, the age of uh, 22, 23. Uh, my my passion was more in uh you know uh learning um and 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 uh you know the reflections around math and logic and philosophy and and history was a, a consequence of uh of philosophy and 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 these things but uh when i started working i i noticed that um we have uh, this uh necessity if we have something if we have a patent if we have a technology if we have resolved the problem if we are not able to present it explain it and then mm -hmm. sell it uh either selling the idea uh, uh convincing someone of something or uh selling something which has a monetary value it doesn't matter it's the same process if that doesn't happen then uh, then it's worth nothing basically Fantastic. We have a, 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 a hello from Freydun. Hello, Freydun. Thanks for your message. Thank you very much. Um, it's fantastic because so you, you entered in one of the prestigious uh, engineering school in France, Central. Um, you studied mainly math and robotics. Uh, you even registered for a PhD program. But what happened, uh, you know, um, you, you didn't like the, the research, the fundamental research? Uh, or... oh, 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 I barely uh, uh, assisted to the courses. It, it was just for my parents, very seriously. Okay. It was just for them to uh, to, to kind of uh, be be happy and, and for a while. Uh, and, and so that maybe they will see that I'm successful in the uh, industrial world or the, or the business world, and and they would be less uh, uh, needing uh, this recognition. Uh, but this this happened actually at the second stage, uh, as I mentioned. After a few years of uh, engineering, after four years, I actually after three years I was promoted to the director of the technical 
uh, team. Uh, so I, I, I had a path towards management, uh, which is usually appreciated. But I uh, decided uh, after one year of uh, first level management, that type of management to get back to a, an individual contributor, but but go to sales. So uh, that move to sales was also interesting. Um, they uh, they uh, my my managers the head of the entity was convinced that I would fail. Uh, they they were they were thinking that I'm a problem solver in in robotics uh, and and not a salesperson. Uh, I had a lot of buttons uh, in my face, uh, thick glasses, and and the nerdy look, uh, and 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 obviously I had an accent uh, speaking French. Uh, Maybe not obviously because uh, I, I lost a lot of that, but it was the, still the very first years. Um, and by the way, it's, it's another story which is also interesting that I, we, we may want to talk about it, and that's related to education, uh, is, is the language, the, the French language. I learned the, the French language related to this accent thing. But uh, so I, I had to do stuff. I uh, basically... Uh, promised that I will continue to do my job as a, as an engineer, and um, and all I ask is that to, they give me three four accounts so that I can work on them uh, in sales. And uh, if within three four months uh, something happens, then then I will go to sales. If not, then uh, I accept that I'm not good at. It. Mm. And and I closed the uh, deals uh, like hell. I uh, had. To and have, ha, uh, we, I would love to have you for an entire episode dedicated to your to medic academy and and and, and what you what, what you have done. Uh, but before we we deep dive into the book, I would like to understand how did you train yourself to sell? Did you read books? Did you follow training? How did you? No, not really. I I, I was not uh, a big. Uh, 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 that type of book readers, uh, the only books were, were in uh, fundamental science. Uh, and I didn't even know that you could learn things like that. No, mm -hmm. I think it was this uh, problem solving um, uh, reflexes that uh, that helped me in, in, in sales. But also those three years that I was as an engineer, I was watching salespeople, how they are dealing and seeing mm -hmm where they could uh, improve and where they could not. But it's uh, it's it's all about uh, getting close to the customer, understanding their need, uh, solving their problems, and then you become um, their respected uh, or, or in the sales language, the trusted advisor. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you become the trusted advisor, if it's, uh, if, uh, it's like a doctor who uh, prescribes uh, um pills uh you will take the pill so mm -hmm. if that pill is a hundred thousand uh, dollars cost <laughs> they have to pay it so um uh, so uh, th why the reason i brought it is that uh and and related to my parents and also my environment uh because by by then uh three years into uh engineering i have my uh ex um uh, schoolmates uh, from Central, other engineers that uh, were we were obviously talking and they were friends and uh, colleagues in the company and my parents and family environment. When I was talking about moving to sales, everyone was saying, are you crazy? I, I mean, uh, seriously, Doris, have you done all this to, to go to become a salesperson? It's <laughs> it's and they were deeply disappointed <laughs> in, in me. Um, uh, but 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 I was convinced that uh, th this was uh, necessary, and 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 they they only believed in what I was saying uh, a couple years later because my my growth in terms of career inside the corporate America, corporate international was very fast. Uh, within two years, I became the head of the entity and became the CEO of Schlumberger Cat Camp. Uh, entity in southern Europe with ten million dollars, and I was only twenty-eight when when I became uh, CEO of this uh, entity. Then everyone, then everyone uh, became satisfied. So okay, that's a good title. We like it. <laughs> and 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 there was no more uh, 
request and where do you stand with your PhD or where do you stand with your engineering school? Fantastic. And you also uh, um, launched your own company, right? I'm, I'm sorry, I did what? Did you, uh, you, um, you also uh, launched your own company, right? I, not at that time. At, at, uh, I didn't uh, start my own company until um, somewhere in late 30s. Mm. Um, that's actually something that I advise a lot to uh, engineers. Um, and I um, recommend people to go to large companies so that you understand and then spend a few years and you understand how it works in those big companies and then go to a smaller company to get closer to entrepreneurship see how um how growth happens from a small company to the to a big one then become an entrepreneur uh, in the meantime you also build yourself financially so that you have some reserves in case something goes wrong as an entrepreneur uh but but some people have this in their uh dna and and they cannot be patient uh for five or ten years of being an employee and they want to be their own boss mm -hmm. from day one and and i totally understand them uh but that's not what i did i first uh, i was first uh, an employee um now you have uh, this fantastic uh, training company, Medic Academy, and let me tell to, to people who doesn't who don't don't know you uh, that you are one of the heavyweight uh, trainer in a B two B sale uh, in the United States, uh, and it's true. Uh, we have also uh, some equivalent of you in France, like uh, Michael Aguilar. That I say hello, and you are literally a kind of heavyweight uh, trainer in sale, B two B sale uh, in the United States. So it's it's, it's it could be a fantastic honor if you can have another another episode uh, just about you know the Medic Academy and uh, and sale. Uh, we yes, have uh, co compared to uh, Michael Aguilar, who, who is absolutely fantastic. Uh, my clients are really only on high-end B2B uh, tech sales. Uh, so I have much less clients and, and they, they are uh, exclusively there. I, it's not that my methodology doesn't apply to other types of sales. It does. But somehow the tech people uh, have been super fast and enthusiastic. So, I, yes, I have trained... Uh, people at uh, Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, Oracle, Salesforce, you know, if you look at the top 10 uh, tech B2B sales, uh, B2B companies, their sales practices are uh, directly uh, derived from uh, Medic and Medpick. Mm, and, and I have, in a way or another, trained some or all of their sales forces. It's, it's, it's absolutely fascinating because I, I think it's the history of, of the Iranian, you know, just like Cyrus and many other just uh, people or, or even prophet like Zorasser, who are most of the West has taken, you know, the, the, the knowledge and but they don't see them. Uh, it's exactly like the same thing with you. You know, you know, there are many people who, who take your your medic training and they adapt it to their needs, but they don't see it. You know, it's uh, it's our fate. We have um, we have a question from uh, from uh, Ali Malihi, who is also very uh, uh, interested by philosophy. So I will share it, but I don't get the. So let me let me uh, read it. Darius, as a problem solver, technology nerd, and a historian, can you hypothesize our path of existence from Genesis Ruze Azar to Infinity Ruze Arbor? <laughs> Assuming there is an, inf an an afterlife, will we see Cyrus the Great and our loved one in a fifth or tenth dimension? Uh, I believe yes, but if data is eternal, could it could its lineage guide us towards infinity? Could we trace? data toward the beginning thank you ali for this question wow <laughs> yes i don't know <laughs> I, I i have uh, no clue yes on the infinity um uh all, all i can say if as as long as uh, uh and and the, the one of the elements of that relationship between infinity and and faith and future is uh that 
if we understand infinity, then we understand that we have always been and we will always be. There is no Ruze Azal and Ruze Abad. There is no beginning and no end because you can obviously ask the question and then what was before that. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if, if we need a, a, a beginning, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense with the infinity. Uh, just a reminder of infinity, let's say uh, infinity small, is that no matter how small is a number, you cut it in two, but you can still you cut it in ten, and cut it in in, in, in uh, uh, a, a million, a billion, or whatever, and there's still a smaller number. So there is no end to it. That that is a concept that not many people many people say they understand it. Not many people truly understand what it is. And the same thing in in in, in you know big infinite uh, infinity uh, grand. Uh, is, is is very similar if there is an end uh, to the universe uh, so uh, we will we will have a wall or somewhere beyond which there is nothing so what happens if you throw a, a stone out there I mean w w how come there is nothing it's impossible so uh, if if um, it, it is infinite it means that it is infinite so there is no end to it and so now this is this is for uh space uh applied to the time same thing uh the, there is no beginning of time and there's no end of time it's just evolution we just evolve uh we uh there are obviously theories of evolution of uh, human beings um and then the evolution of the universe with uh, the scale of time, uh, which are uh, n not measurable, but anything we can imagine. That's that's that was that's a very quick way of the relationship between infinite and and the view of of life uh, and and universe. But there is obviously more to that, which uh, goes to the determinism versus um, free will. Um, and I believe in in, in uh, free will, uh, and I think that great entrepreneurs necessarily believe in free will, uh, because otherwise uh, they cannot. I mean, you cannot imagine that you can change something. You cannot imagine that you can build something that will change humanity. It's someone like Elon Musk, um, if you believe that it's already known. Um, uh it, it it contradicts itself but uh okay i don't want to take too much time uh for this uh, episode um and i make a digression and there is some theoretical uh theoretical physics in cosmology you know that's the, um, that's saying that you know the universe is uh uh when when it's collapse it re it restarts you know, like with, with another big bang you know it collapses and another big bang so it's it's literally infinite and uh, have you have you uh, what what was your your emotion your feelings when you heard about the two Iranian you know the the regretted uh, Maria Mirzakhani uh, who won the the field medal and also Kusher Birka you know the two Iranian who, who who won the field medal was it something that uh, interests you what they what they because I don't understand what they do you know in terms of tech, of their maths but maybe you you get it you know. Uh, their math is too modern for me too. Uh, uh, I, I, I remember, I mean, I was the, that generation in Iran where the modern math was just introduced. I was, uh, uh, I think, the uh, uh, second uh, year of what they would call the new uh, educational system uh, under the regime of the Shah, where uh, math, modern math was introduced. And I, I didn't like it. I mean, I was good at it because it's a lot of logic, but uh, I was more the geometry. By the way, when I um, uh, went to Matsup in, in France, um, my surname was Le Geometre, uh, mm -hmm. the guy who knows geometry, because for everything in, in algebra, in everything in other, uh, uh, or, or trigonometry, for everything, I had a geometrical solution to the problem or representation of the problem. And it Just like not... the physician Feynman, you know, he was very good at teaching physics because he was good at geometry. Exactly. Absolutely. I love Feynman. Uh, I have an article on our website about his uh, learning techniques and, and, and amazing. 
And Maria Mizrahani was a geometer, geometer too. Yes, yes. So, so, so I, I have admiration, but, but uh, sadly, I never had the opportunity to, uh, you know, sit down and focus on her work and, and read her books or anything. Uh, just, but did just... you feel some kind of, I, know, I don't know, uh, pleasure or honor to, to, to hear in the press that they, that they, they won this, this prize? Absolutely, of course. Like like uh, every everyone of Iranian descent, uh, I admired her, and and I think the humanity because uh, at such a young age, uh, having uh, those achievements is uh, a, a, an honor for uh, women, for humanity, whoever has something in common with her. And for the anecdote, the the, the poor Kosha Birkar, who is the second Iranian who won the the the, the field medals. Someone stole his medal, you know, so he doesn't have it physically because someone stole it. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a true story. It's very sad. So just what it was a digression, but it was a cool to talk about this with you. So now let's talk about this great book. Let me share the screen. Uh, you want to show the... the uh, do, do you see my screen? Yeah, uh, a part of it, it's, uh, it's cropped a little bit. It's crops. Oh, sorry. Let, let me check. Oh, yes. I can, I can show it here if uh, if that helps. Uh, so that's the. Um, yes, that 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 works. Is it now better here. now? Okay. So just yes. so you have, of course, uh, um, uh, uh, an author page on Amazon. So people, you can you can just check uh, the the three books of, of Darius. But this, today is dedicated to this book, uh, Leadership by Cyrus the Great, Unlocking Xenophon's Cyropedia. This is a fantastic book. Uh, I, I read it cover to cover. I took a lot of notes, uh, a lot of notes, uh, because it teach you uh, for for your everyday life, uh, for your personal life, but also for your business life. It's a, it's a, it's a fantastic uh, book with a with a very accessible style. Uh, believe me, reading Xenophon in his in his uh, in its uh, in its writing is quite quite uh, quite uh, difficult. But here you have a version of Xenophon with, with the add-on, with the takeaway. Uh, it's fantastic. So I really recommend you to, to take a look at this book. Uh, the Kindle is, has a fantastic price. Thanks, Darius, for offering uh, the Kindle nearly for free. But if you want, uh, let me just cut this. Uh, come back with us. If you want the hug, the beautiful color, particularly to Iranians who, who like to have beautiful books. Sorry for the... Maybe you can share it yours because yes, uh, I, I, I have this uh, the uh, soft uh, cover uh, which is a, a smaller. It's, it's still a six by nine in 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 inches, so it's still a uh, bigger um, paperback than than usual, and it's all in color inside, uh, just like the big book. Uh, but the one you have is is a very large. Uh, uh, luxury format uh, that can be a, a coffee table, uh, you know. Uh, it's, it's table. Very... The half seen table. If you don't have a charnamé or or even or even uh, uh, the Avesta, you can you can put this book on your half seen table. Yes, uh, honestly, uh, it's not because the book I I wrote, but this is one of the reasons. The, one of the motivations is that um, I make a comparison to charnamé. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, it's not it's not me. It's a, obviously I, I uh, it's a seventy percent edit of uh, Xenophon's book. I don't consider this as as my book. I have just uh, humbly added uh, some some stuff to it to make it accessible to everyone. That's all I did. So uh, comparing Cyropedia um, accessible uh, edition uh, that I I prepared to Shahnameh. Let let's mention a few things. Uh, Shahnameh is fantastic. I have the big uh, uh, edition of it, huge edition. I love it. Uh, from time to time, I just uh, read some uh, poems there. Shahnameh is a book in, in Persian, written by a Persian, to say all great things about Persians. Mm -hmm. We love it. Great. But it's, uh, it's just, um, you know, self-promotion. Cyropedia is the contrary. Cyropedia is a Greek philosopher and historian 
very respectable um, student of um, Socrates. Uh, and uh, he admires Cyrus the Great. He admires the Persian culture. He writes, uh, you may have noticed it in, in the book, there are uh, at least three areas in the book, he says, the noble Persians. For him, as a Greek person, he sees Persians as kind of superior ethnicity, superior uh, culture and civilization that he's learning from. And uh, so this, I think, for, for those who are proud of their um, DNA or, or their past, this one is really the thing because it's a foreigner saying this and uh do you agree with that ari absolutely and uh, you know uh the ancient greek was were used to say were considered the rest of the world as savage as barbarian but they consider the person the person as their equal so they said we the civilized and the others but without without naming us <laughs> Uh, uh, and the others are the, are the savage or the barbarian. So just to understand how much they respect the Iranian philosophy uh, and uh, civilization. And also uh, some scholars are, say now that Zoroaster, the, the prophet of, of the, 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 the Iran, was uh, met so so Socrates or, or Socrates knew Zoroaster by any way. He, maybe he read his, the Avesta or he met, he met the, the mage. The Najwar, the priesthood of Iran, you know, but right. so there is a legacy from Iran to Greek also. That's absolutely, absolutely, and and this is uh, this is something uh, to consider for some of some elements of our uh, culture uh, and the influence of the Persian cultures into the West, because uh, everyone knows how the Greek influenced Romans, uh, this Roman civilization. Uh, was sourced uh, through Greeks. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that the European civilization um, in the uh, 17th, 18th, 19th, uh, uh, even 20th uh, century were derived from the Roman Empire. Absolutely. And they, uh, and, and they today's um, ultra power, the United States, got its uh, culture sourced from Europe. Obviously, it's literally Europeans settled in in the us but what we don't know because we don't have evidence and cyropedia is probably the book which shows is the most is that the greek uh got at certainly a lot of what they learned from the persians uh cyropedia is is one example that we know uh aristotle who is uh the age in terms for the chronology Aristotle is about the age of the son of Xenophon uh, and uh, Aristotle was Alexander's coach mm -hmm. so uh, we have uh, two levels down from Xenophon we have Alexander and uh, this book was uh, as been mentioned several times as a reference book for Alexander's strategies and and, and everything so if uh someone like alexander who is considered as the uh top strategist all times at least in the greek environment in the in the western environment and and he learned from cyrus what else did the greek learn from the persians uh we should question one thing that you may have uh, heard in the news uh a few years ago when they found um the ancient civilization in Jiroft, uh, mm. east of Iran, uh, things that they, they found is that the ratio of that triangle that, that you see in, in uh, Greek buildings uh, everywhere, uh, including uh, what we can find today in Roma or in Paris, uh, La Madeleine, uh, all these, uh, and, and you have one, by the way, here, uh this triangle the proportions and the the shape uh is has been found exactly as is in Giro from 5000 years ago meaning that it was about uh over 
two to three thousand before the the Greek civilization and the the um, um, the growth of the of of the Greek. So um, it's not because we don't have evidence of it that it, they didn't happen. They possibly happened uh, somewhere there. Um, just uh, maybe uh, an, uh, a quote from Ali uh, Malihi: Cyropedia and Shahnameh are very different. Uh, uh, like Apple and Orange, Shahnameh is an epic and all about mythology. I don't agree with you, Ali, because Shahnameh is, is intermingled between history and also mythology. And mythology is also a way to, to, to talk about history, of course, with, without, with, um, without the precision of modern historians. But it's how people back then talk about their history. Mythology is what is called now, but for them, for the history. Absolutely. Um, I agree with you. And if you, if I may add something real here is that we call it mythology because we don't somehow believe in it. So we call it mythology. And this actually exists. I don't know if it's in Ali's uh, text, which uh, I can't read fully, but um, uh, I, I just see the reason I'm bringing up is that he mentions Herodot, Herodot uh, versus Xenophon for many years because there are some inconsistency, not a lot, but there are some inconsistency between the way Xenophon describes Cyrus and the way Herodot described the history there. Um, a lot of people, uh, especially in the past century, were saying, oh, Xenophon's is mythology. Mm -hmm. And for many years uh, in the past century, uh, Cyropedia was, was, was considered exactly like Shahnameh, half mythology, imagination of Xenophon. Mm. Let me say a few things. First of all, history is describing the perception of the one who writes it. Even the very recent history, even the thing which happened this year. They, I, can, I, I don't want to, obviously, we don't want to talk about the ongoing politics, but look at the uh, uh, the pandemic uh, right now, at least in the U.S., even in, in Europe, there are very opposite views of what was this pandemic. Just 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 something which is so new, so present. We have all the evidence. We have everything to dig into that. But still, there are two opposite views of what happened with the pandemic. And the history which will be written about the pandemic is going to be two different versions. One will be predominant somehow, uh, who knows which one. And the other one will be said that, ah, oh, yeah, there are some other guys who say the other things. We don't know. Those are just two different views and uh, that exist. So same thing for the Shahnameh -Nah and same thing for Xenophon's uh, uh, a view about the Persians at the end of the and the epilogue of the book, uh, I, I have that's one of the areas in the book that I have a bigger edit. And each time I edit, you you know this uh, area. I'm saying this for everyone else. I write it in different characters so that everyone knows that this is this is my edit. This is my view, um, and it says editor's note um, that um, one of the reasons possibly that other Greek uh, authors and Western authors during all these years, during 2,400 years, have criticized things about Cyropedia regarding the, the truth uh, mm -hmm. versus mythology is that it's not pleasant when he is saying uh, Persians invented this, Persians created this, uh, we learned it from Persians, Persians nobles, etc. While the rest of the, uh, a, a lot of, not not the rest, but a lot of other Greeks are so proud of their creations and consider that it's their own creations. So sorry to, for the interruptions, but that's, uh, that mythology part is each time some people, uh, very respected academicians, it doesn't matter. They don't like something and they call it mythology. Mm. By the way, just to as a digression on, on Shahnameh either, in the first part of the Shahnameh, uh, now scholar with linguistic with language uh, helped with mathematician and computer science that has deciphered that 
the first part of the Shahnameh that is very mythological, not historical, is in fact the roots of, of uh, Indo-European um, mythology or base of belief, you know. Uh, so even older than the, the Iranian people, the, the ancestor of both Iranian and European who, who lived 8,000 years ago in in, in, in the north of uh, Caucasus, where somewhere in U nowadays Ukraine. Um, so <laughs> just uh, to digression about mythology and history, now we know that the, yeah, yeah. what is called the mythological part of the Shahnami is even has some part of, of, uh, I'm of sure. truth. Yes. Uh, Azadeh Tajar, thanks for your comment. Uh, so uh, let me show it and read it online. Empire and civilization share ideas and innovation. Absolutely. The fusion that Mr. Laotifa refers to between Persian and Greek became, Hel became Hellenism. Uh, in fact, uh, Alexander the Great and the Seleucid things found that they could Hellenize us, but they became Persian. <laughs> this is uh, uh, my personal view. But there are many examples of this between the West and the East, of course. Mitraism. Uh, which was the ancient practice of the Persian, which was a type of Zoroastrianism, uh, was brought to Rome by Roman soldiers. Absolutely, the, the Roman legionnaires, the Roman so elite soldier, practiced Mitraism, which was a, uh, an Iranian, an Iranian tradition derived from Zoroastrianism. Perhaps the issue that we face right now is how, as Iranian, to become more aware of, of, of our Iranic wisdom and culture, of course, and to draw from it in our day to day. Uh, I think it's a question for you. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. The, which part is the question for me? Uh, the uh, becoming aware of what who we are and, and our culture and our legacy and of course, of course, that's uh, that's one of the. Uh, key points, and and I'm working on the uh, Persian uh, translation of uh, of of my book because um, uh, Iranians today uh, need to uh, be aware of uh, what's going on. Uh, I should uh, yeah. since That's we have a lot of this. Am I? Uh, um, yeah, I hear. Yeah, you, you come back. So uh, you just just. Talk about the, the translation of your book for Iranian and how much. Yeah, I was uh, briefly saying that I'm working on the translation and uh, it will be available some some sometime soon. I hope. Uh, and uh, the um, uh, the present uh, Iran Iran and present Iranians uh, have a lot to uh, learn about it, and that's why I actually brought the comparison to Shahnameh. My dream is that. Um, Xenophon's uh, Cyropedia become as famous as Shahnameh exactly because it's a foreigner, is a Greek uh, author uh, praising the good habits of the Persians and the noble Persians, as as he calls them uh, in the book several times. Uh, so um, I think it's really worth now. Uh, the, this conversation, I love it. It's it's amazing. Uh, we are into history, philosophy, etc. I don't consider myself at all as a uh, history scholar or anything. Uh, I love history. I, I uh, read books uh, of history, um, but but the reason of my interest, the reason I uh, wrote this book, is uh, the link to leadership management and uh leadership is not uh necessarily it's, we're doing this in on linkedin but i've done similar uh podcasts uh on a, a more uh um like instagram and and uh facebook social networks that are not necessarily that professional uh and i always say that leadership is not necessarily in the corporate environment uh, it's not for managers. Mm -hmm. Leadership, the definition, and by the way, it's also in the introduction of the book, is the ability to influence others mm -hmm. so that they do achieve or work towards uh, the common goals, the goals that you have said that they approve it, uh, and influencing them so that they go towards these goals with pleasure, mm -hmm. with love, wanting to do that that's leadership and if 
if we understand and agree with this definition of leadership, leadership, the first, as soon as you have a couple, there is leadership. Uh, and literally in, in, in couples, there are um, in many couples, most couples, I would say, there's always one leader who one who likes to be led, enjoys being led and one who enjoys leading. And obviously, even in a more important way in a family, uh, parents are leaders. Uh, so parenthood is something which is totally uh, under attack, in my opinion, in the uh, society right now for a lot of reasons. Uh, going back to basics uh, with uh, what we learn, we learn from this book helps us in the leadership. I can give examples. Uh, one of the uh, um, things that we see in, in Cyrus is his, this personality of a very generous, very kind, uh, very open and flexible. But he doesn't uh, he, he doesn't make any joke if someone fails in their in their achievements. He is at the same time promoting and encouraging and 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 giving bonuses to those who are achieving their goals and at the same time he demotes and downgrades and 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 penalizes those who fail in what they are doing no joking it's not so so if you don't have that um you cannot um, train educate at the very beginning you mentioned what i have from my my own family and 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 uh my 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 father that education and that may be something and we we talked about persians uh uh liking their kids education that is potentially coming from cyrus because uh if you read the book you will see how important is education he says uh number one thing at the at the, at the beginning everywhere and and that one of the reasons Xenophon is writing this is because it's the it's in the name of the book uh Cyropedia in in, in Greek is the education education how we learn from Cyrus both and how Cyrus got educated there is a um you know that there is uh, at least the the first uh quarter 25 percent of the book is focused on about how Cyrus himself got educated, what was his education looking like, who influenced him, his conversations with his father, his conversations with his grandfather, uh, his speeches, and, and so on. Absolutely. Um, how did you get the idea to work on this book? Because uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a life mission, you know, so it's not something easy. Uh, how did how the idea pop up in your mind, and how did you work on it? Uh, what was your workflow on making right. modern version of Xenophon writings? First time I uh, noticed uh, this book, this is the version that, that I first saw. And and if you, uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's too white, uh, mm -hmm. like this. Uh, it's just text. It's yeah. text, text, text. There is no subtitle. There is no, not even a uh, table of content. Uh, obviously, no images. Nothing. It's just text. Boom, 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 boom. Right, all the way to the end. And there are eight volumes uh, like this. And the and the style is very difficult. Also. The style is very difficult. It's translated uh, in the 18th uh, century, and. Um, Gosh, it was not it was not easy to understand. I was so motivated to learn uh, from the book and uh, it didn't uh, it, it, it was very hard to, to read. Maybe I read 25 percent, but it was uh, constantly a, a, a book not far so that I can uh, continue reading and understanding what we're talking about. Then I came across. I don't know if I have it somewhere here. Uh, and another book of Larry Hendricks in the, in the in the book I mentioned it I found it here. Uh, Larry's book is this one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This this is Larry's Larry Hendricks uh, book that I loved, um, and this one um, made it um, easier to uh, to to read because it's modern English, and he added some subtitles. 
but there are uh, and i am grateful uh to larry uh he is in uh, listed in the book um, among persons uh, to whom i'm extremely grateful for what he did that said <laughs> there are things that i didn't like otherwise i wouldn't write this book so what are the things that i didn't like uh first of all uh it's not for two big reasons it's not the real book meaning mm -hmm. that uh there are, I think, 18 uh, chapters uh, in, in the book, uh, in, in the paid, uh, contents uh, page. Uh, it has nothing to do with uh, uh, Cyropedia. Cyropedia has eight, it's called books or volume or whatever, sections, uh, big chapters, I would say. And each one has uh, between five to ten um, sections in it. And they represent something they represent the life of cyrus from his education from the, the time he spent with his grandpa in uh the mid region the today's kurdistan region um uh and then and then the first uh army that he created how he created and then um the uh armenia's uh, conquest what happened then and and then region by region we have the you don't see that in in Larry's book. It's there that that uh, that order of the history part, the life of Cyrus part is not there. It's Larry has focused on the leadership, mm. and, and on the leadership itself, all he does uh, again, I'm super grateful. But all he has done is just a, a one sentence, sometimes a phrase uh, of of leadership um i have developed uh a, at least a paragraph sometimes a full page detailing what we mean here why, why did cyrus do this uh what is the flexibility he is referring to and how it applies to today's leadership management and and i maybe i'm luckier than than larry in the sense that it's my business i am seeing uh corporate leaders uh every day uh having challenges with these issues and i teach that and it's part of the programs that we have so maybe uh it's it was easier for me to develop the leadership part uh in the form of um, big sections they are uh clearly identified in the book as uh i'm just opening one section uh as a as a lesson uh like this and and there are obviously a lot of them almost on every page uh, that's the second thing and and the third thing that i really really didn't like larry and he explains it at the beginning of the book has decided to um narrate it as a first person mm. so it's cyrus narrating his life i did this i did that and uh I, th I thought it appeared narcissistic. It appeared uh, very self-centered. I did that because it's totally different. Xenophon was praising him. Maybe Cyrus uh, didn't, wouldn't, would never talk this way about himself, but Xenophon was praising him, putting these words in the mouth of Cyrus, saying this way is uh, not the reality. So that's... Uh, the third reason I thought it was not really Cyropedia. So I wanted to get back to Cyropedia. Uh, and, and if someone doesn't even want to read my parts, they are very clear. Uh, the summary, the blue parts, there are the additional part, the, the addition, the edited parts. And the rest of it is just rewriting it in the modern English language. So I think it's uh, more, it's closer uh, edition uh, a more truthful edition of Cyropedia. Absolutely. Um, maybe we can we can let's uh, disclose some part of the book, uh, the the conquest of Babylon, and what 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 is the, the leadership takeaway, and the mundane story also, and and also what is very interesting is how uh, Cyrus uh, behave with uh, the conquered people and how he got the love of the conquered people this is this is amazing in this story you know most of yes. the time conquerors are hated but uh that's absolutely true 
um so yeah we, we can absolutely the conquest of babylon that's a very smart uh strategy um uh he uh basically the the uh, uh, first of all babylon was the most civilized the, the most advanced city and, and very rich uh of of the world at at the time uh so uh just a reminder for those who are not uh, seeing it that way at the time countries didn't mean much mm -hmm. the uh, civilization was developed in the cities and mm -hmm. and that's that's why in the democracy uh, uh definition in, uh, of the of the greeks uh they have the athenians they they have the spartans they have the macedonians they uh so because these are the cities um and so uh, the city of babylon was uh the most advanced uh at at, at the time so it was at a certain time and th this becomes it becomes the second city that uh cyrus conquered the the, the first one was sadis sadis was super wealthy because uh sadis is uh today is for those who can or are uh, close to turkey is near Esmir, and the uh, ruins can be seen so this was a very wealthy uh city that he had just uh conquered and um uh they they were already they, the army had already uh been developed and and mm -hmm. was strong so we are not at the beginning of his conquest we are somewhere in the middle of the conquest mm -hmm. um and um uh, the way he, he did it is in, in a, I, I'm going to say in a very short uh, manner. There is the, the um, Euphrat uh, River, which goes through the city. And, uh, and the city is totally protected uh, by uh, long walls and, and towers all around where uh, they would defend that or they would attack anyone who would get close uh, to the city. So what what they did they they built towers uh, afar so in a perimeter which is uh, longer so that they can see what's going on in the city and uh, when they notice that there is a party going on a, a festival or something going on uh, they immediately um, and they and and they had they had um, digged in um, uh, a uh, uh in, in tranche, uh um a, 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 uh, they had emptied all this digging around the, the the city so at a certain time when decided they divert the river into around the city <laughs> so the level of the river goes down for the part which goes inside the city as a result of that since there were not a lot of water uh, his soldiers could walk into the city from the river. So basically, uh, during the party, uh, they uh, they got trapped, basically, the, the, the soldiers coming in from the river and taking over uh, the, the city. And of course, yes. No, Peter, I just wanted to say that the Congress of Babylon was also very interesting because there was not so much blood that was... Uh... Yes, that's 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 how it, it, it happened they they had no other choice because uh, as soon as they first of all they were partying and as soon as they 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 realized the army was already inside the city there is uh, no big fight or battle that uh, took place and of course uh, he is he says this very clearly that um the aftermath was uh extremely important because he let them uh, have their uh, religion and their uh, practices. Uh, he did free 40,000 Jews uh, who were slaves um, at, in, in Babylon. <clears throat> so these actions, uh, and, and obviously all these guys became, became his uh, allied. Uh, and all this uh, made it a sustainable victory and and back to what the, you were asking why uh these people were liking him if you if you notice in each contest somehow he had internal allies uh mm -hmm. there were people who for some reason uh in in the conquest of armenia's con conquest of assyria there were always some people who 
have been uh, seduced, attracted by his personality and joined him. Uh, that's, that's how he managed uh, to, uh, of course, in some cases he had to kill and, and, uh, and, and the fight were, were tough. Uh, but generally speaking, after the conquest, people were enjoying being part of the, otherwise it wouldn't last 350 years, uh, the, uh, the conquest of the uh, Ashemenids. Um, so that's, that's one uh, interesting thing, uh, take away. Another one that I like a lot is his first speech uh, when he was uh, barely 20 years old, um, the, actually the beginning of his conquest, uh, happens this way uh he had connected with her mother's uh family uh the medes um who uh were threatened for years by assyrians and once his grandpa um passes his uncle um uh, mother's brother uh being threatened by assyrians asks cyrus to come and help them. And uh, at, the, at the time, Cyrus was a prince in, in Persia, and the Persia of the time was uh, a, 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 a tiny region around uh, Mardash, uh, around the actual Persepolis today, uh, and Shan, uh, which is not very far either, part of the actual Khuzestan and part of the actual uh, Fars uh, province of, of existing Iran. So it's very small. Uh, region. He was a prince there, and and they call him to come and help them. Uh, one thing which is similar to uh, the a practice in corporate today, which is uh, cooptation. Uh, 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 when you want to hire, when you are at, at PTC, when we were hiring fast, our best way to find new talents and hire was someone's internal company's recommendation, cooptation. Uh, mm -hmm. cooperation uh and uh that that was practiced by cyrus this is how he built his first army how did he do that he asked friends and family uh that he each of them introduced three persons three persons who had they didn't need to be soldiers but he, they had the potential to become soldiers so they they were you know in in, in good health but most importantly they had the right attitude he had some criteria of attitude that's how he brought this together and and obviously each of these three he asked them to bring three more uh and and so on so he built an army of thirty thousand people mm -hmm. this way within a short period of time within months and then he trained them etc and uh his famous speech probably the first speech the first motivational speech of the history, probably. I've never seen any speech uh, presented before, I, but I, I, I should be cautious about this. I have not done a specific research. So that's why I'm saying probably the first motivational speech in the in the history of humanity. Uh, it's, it's amazing. He starts by saying that we are not doing this uh, <clears throat> uh, just to be to suffer and and take the risk of being killed we we human beings do suffer for something when we hope getting something and you are here because you hope getting something and that something is the honor is the the pleasure of victory and that's that's why this this army is going to win um and there will be of course he mentions there will be, of course wealth and comfort and good life after that but the number one thing is your belief in winning and and being proud of uh, becoming a winner when i read this i said wow this is so modern this is so modern to create a purpose in 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 sales leadership we call this creating a purpose mm -hmm. uh, i uh, help companies create their annual sales kickoffs. I just came back from Barcelona where uh, one of my clients had 300 people in the room and I helped them. I 
had a speech myself and 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 workshops and so on for this group and what i always say is that these people who are spending two days in their annual kickoff uh, meetings uh, leaders should focus on three things education motivation and purpose and this third one which purpose is meaning that every individual in the company needs to have a purpose there should be a reason why they are motivation you can motivate people with money you can motivate people with bonuses and things like that but that doesn't give them a purpose a purpose is saying i am destined to fix this problem or to do this and that will be my achievement that will when i go home and talk to my uh, other half uh this is what i'm proud of or when i'm talking to my children and, and of course the beginning of everything is education uh so in, in his speech he the first few months he spent time educating them in uh you know uh throwing javelins and 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 uh defending and fighting those things like that it's great what you this part because we see uh, in many uh uh let's say peplum movie uh that you have you know the king uh Or, or the general who commit to train the young, you know, uh, doing doing uh, javelin and, and saber and so on, sword, swording. But in fact, Cyrus do it for, for real, you know, the king or the prince Cyrus train the young, doing the sword, the javelin and the, the fighting. And uh, he, that's, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. One of the very first uh, lessons that we see in the book is leading by example. Mm -hmm. He was fighting shoulder to shoulder with his guys. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing. Uh, it gives me goosebump when I'm talking about this. But uh, uh, everyone everyone needs uh, to to read this, uh, uh, and and not not just Persians. I mean, this is humanity. This is this is how uh, we have a purpose in life. Uh, Absolutely. Many people have to work uh, to 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 make a living uh, uh, without purpose. And if we find our purpose, then we are happy in humans. Absolutely. I raise um, so a point just as important business model and revenue model is to a business. Uh, the magic of Cyrus the Great was the way he induced loyalty of foreign land after conquering them. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I had a question about that. He never wanted to conquer and metamorphize their soul and the way of life. Absolutely. He just installed a fair federal government Uh, that allowed states to have independence and work interoperably. So yes. this is very important because when Cyrus conquered a city, a kingdom, um, he never humiliated people. By the way, during the battle, he has uh, some kind of law uh, to his soldier. He forbid, he forbade looting of uh, violence against women and children. So for that time, 2050 years ago, You know, where human life has no value, you know, when people butcher each other every day, the, the, the modernity of his mind, of his soul was something uh, fantastic. Absolutely. And another, another story related to that is the love story of Pantea and Abradatas mm -hmm. in the book. Pantea was considered the most beautiful woman uh, on earth uh, and she was uh, captured and... Uh, At the time, obviously, the uh, the emperor uh, was having that as one of uh, his wives. Cyrus, at that time, still was single and and had not didn't have any. So so he could easily, and and he says, I don't even want to see her. Don't bring her to me because that may trigger desire to wanting her. You told me that she's married, and she has a husband. Uh, Uh, gone uh, to Bactri Bactrians uh, for war or for whatever. Uh, let let the husband get back, and and uh, she's gonna be our uh, prisoner, but but with respect and uh, no um, uh, aggression of any sort uh, without her her one. So I don't uh, go to the whole story, and and it's a, a drama by itself at the end. But there are very beautiful moments of uh, the way Pontea, uh, once they are reunited with uh, her 
husband, the way she uh, uh, sacrifices her jewelries to build a armor uh, for Abradatas and, and their dialogue there, which is a really beautiful love dialogue. And then the, the, what happens when Abradatas is killed during the war and and uh, and the, um, the way uh, Pontea acts, uh, I don't want to disclose too many things. It's really, really uh, deep emotions uh, coming out, showing the character of Cyrus, how uh, he was uh, uh, loved, uh, for instance, in this case, by Pantera as a father, as a protector, as mm -hmm. someone uh, she could trust. Same thing for these uh, groups that uh, Ali is uh, referring to, these ethnicities, these people, they were so in love with the character of uh, Cyrus that they wanted to be part of this uh, country, this new country that he was building. It's very similar to some, uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, obviously uh, in the US and not all of your uh, audience uh, are in the US or Americans and some of them may not, may not like Americans, but the fact is that there are many, um, regions or countries in the world that want America to come and help them uh, and, and they want to be part of it, uh, mm -hmm. not to mention the migration flow inside the U.S. where in the past 13, uh, in the past three years, we had 18 million illegals that even that aside, the attraction of a, uh, of a country that is succeeding, that is providing uh, to their people freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, a lot of freedoms. Well, people want it. Uh, he, uh, Cyrus had enemies as, uh, as well, obviously. Who doesn't have? Um, still, he had, he had wars, but, but generally speaking, he was attacked. And this is a transaction, trans transition, sorry, to uh, why Jefferson and Franklin, the founding fathers of the US, were actually reading Cyropedia. We didn't talk about this. Uh, one of the reasons, one of the motivations I had was, what the hell is in this book? Or, <laughs> or what part of the, I, I was even hearing, I didn't even know, at the, you know a, a few years ago that it was related to Cyropedia. I was reading that the US constitution is inspired from Cyrus. And, and I think maybe it's it has something to do with the Cyrus cylinder. Uh, it has something to do with this and that, but it's not. It's Cyropedia, exactly. Yeah. Cyropedia, the book. And what is it in it? Yes, you wanted to. No, no. I just wanted to say exactly what you are saying. No, I, I read every great book in business that that is published from scholar from Ahva Stanford, whatever, and every leadership book I read from this modern scholar. I found the roots in your Syropedia. Yes. Authentic leadership, ethical leadership, responsible, accountable uh, leadership, um, established, leading by 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 um, by exactly. showing everything yeah. that now you know. Uh, you find a book about it written by a great scholar in, uh, from uh, Harvard and other big big name Ivy League. You find the roots in uh, the behavior of Cyrus. The yes. Now, what I wanted to say is that uh, there is a reason these uh, the, the founding fathers of the U.S. were reading that. It was not by chance. Think about it. Uh, their challenges were exactly the same. So when they uh, were doing the independence of the U.S. and with these 16, 13, and then 16 states becoming independent, but they are states, they have their some sort of... Uh, you know there are a group of people some some were french some were coming from the uk uh from uh great britain uh so uh how are we managing to create a system where they they can be they feel like their own country or state but still have a, a, a country as united so that's that's one thing and the other thing is that these people are from I mean, not many religions at the time. They were mainly uh, Protestants and Catholics, uh, mostly. Uh, but still, um, it, it was an issue. Uh, uh, so 
they were saying, let's look into the history and see who had similar challenges. And bingo, they come across Cyrus who had similar challenges, which is, uh, I want a united country. I want a united empire, but still have some sort of um, independence from the ethnicities, from the people, so that they don't have the impression that we are imposing anything on them. Mm -hmm. So, and then there is slavery. Uh, at the time, the uh, the uh, at the time of the independence of the U.S., there was still slavery. Uh, Cyrus had also that problem to to solve, and uh, finally the the freedom. Uh, that is so well known so they said okay he, he he has done it how did he do it let's let's read that book and learn from it that's that's how it did and and satraps uh that existed in in uh ancient persia that cyrus created and in the book he explains exactly the 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 uh political structure of the satraps why the head of the satrap needs to be designated by uh by cyrus by the kingdom uh mm -hmm. and and why everything else needs to be their decision and they should be self-governing themselves in that regard just let's uh, say what is a satrapy a satrapy is a is a local government go government govern Government. Governor or governorate, uh, and you, you you make a fantastic transition um, about that because you know there is a very famous saying in marketing for a, for an expanding and international brand: think global, act local. Once again, Cyrus did it 2,050 years ago. He think yep. global, but he act local. Exactly like you said with Satrapi, he um, he put a governorate who was usually someone from. Uh, from the, the ethnicity of the religion or the culture of the of the conquered land, he was under the law of the empire. But everything yep. else was their choice, was their was their everyday life. Yes. So that that's uh, one one key element how to manage uh, and and the U.S. called it federal uh, federation of states. Uh, uh, there are differences, uh, uh, of course. I don't get into those details now, but but the the general spirit is the same. And the the other thing is uh, making it clear and stating it and saying it the freedom, of the First Amendment, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom of gatherings, make it the first principle. Um, there is always a difference between um, doing something and then uh, claiming it and proudly mentioning it. One of the things that Persians uh, did is that they were aware, and we'll see this with Darius uh, as well later, uh, is that not only they were doing some stuff that were, they were conscious that these stuff are so progressive, they are so modern, that they're, they're so important, they're so strategic, that they would write it down and proudly mention it. It was a disruption uh, for the for the era. Just imagine how uh, bloodthirsty was the Assyrian Empire. Yes. Uh, there was just no like just like the South American uh, civilization, they cut head every day. You know, they yes. had an industry of cutting head. That's absolutely <laughs> so we see it in the uh in the uh, cylinder, uh, what, what he, he proudly declares, he we uh, Xenophon repeats it in in Cyropedia, and we see it also with uh, Darius, uh, Darius uh, uh, written um, 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 Katibe uh, written documents or uh, in, on stone in Persepolis uh, that are right now exposed. Uh, at, on, on the site where, for instance, he, he writes the fact that we paid uh, people to build this palace. We paid women. Uh, we paid them uh, for the pregnancy uh, period. We paid uh, their holidays. Uh, so it's not just they were doing this. They know it's so advanced that it's worth mentioning it for the history. Absolutely. And... Um... You know, uh, very, what is very funny because uh, we, we both grew up in France and, and uh, you know, French are very proud to say that they ha are the first to have abolished 
uh, slave slavery, but it's not true. It's Iranian, you know, 2050 yes. years ago, who, who did that before them? <laughs> you know, the, the abolished slavery during Lafayette or Napoleon's era, I don't know exactly, but it was during this era. Yes. Um, one other point uh, is how I, I, we already talked about that, but it's very important to repeat it because I have an anecdote about that. Uh, how uh, Cyrus do not did not humiliate, you know, the conquered king uh, uh, kingdom and and territory he conquered, and the people uh, were very well treated. Just imagine at the same time, um, sixty uh, hundred before Christ in Europe, in France, we have a great king named Brian Brenus, Brenus, who conquered Rome, you know, but he humiliated so much the Roman that he put the seed of hate in the, in the heart of the Roman for hundreds of years. And when Julius Caesar became, became the emperor, the only thing he has, he had in his mind is to conquer and and wipe out the Celtic people, you know? So that's why it's very important to not humiliate uh, the conquered people when you, when you win. Uh, and even it's true today, when you do a merge and acquisition, do not humiliate it. Do not humiliate it, the tiny yeah. stuff that you bought, the, the, the team, the culture, the way of thinking, you know, because uh, you will lose uh, uh, a precious asset. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> Ali, Ali has put two uh, comments. Yeah. With, so, I will. Uh, I think uh, Darius and Ali, you have to connect and discuss uh, warmly together because uh, uh, we are we are running a little bit out of time. Um, what can we say more about? Uh, uh, do you want to talk about more about about the book? Or, or we are... I, I think I think we covered uh, quite a bit uh, of the subjects and 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 the content. Uh, uh, so if there are no uh, specific things uh, in in mind, uh, I en encourage everyone. Uh, the uh, the Kindle version is um, less than a dollar is the minimum that I can do on on mm -hmm. Amazon. Uh, also, as uh, authors on Amazon, we have five days every ninety days to give it for free. So I have already used it three days, and there are two days uh, coming uh, until. Cyrus Day, so on Cyrus Day it will be uh, free on Amazon Kindle, uh, and it will be one more day uh, somehow. So uh, if you follow the uh, Cyropedia page or myself uh, on LinkedIn, since we are doing this on LinkedIn, on other social media, obviously we, we announce that. So uh, you will be informed uh, to get a free copy if uh, you like one. And of course, if you are more interested, uh, obviously. Uh, you can you can get the uh, uh, higher uh, level volumes. Uh, it is a beautiful um, hardcover edition, luxurious hardcover edition. I think it particularly for Iranian people who would like to put it on a half scene table, very important. Uh, so uh, thank you, Ali Parande. Also, thank you, Ali, for being with us. Uh, maybe, you, Darius, uh, first of all, thank you so much for 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 all of this, for sharing your passion with, 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 with us today. It was, it was great because uh, you know how much is it, it is important for just, not just for us Iranian, because we are, we are passionate by, by genetics, you know, but about our history. And you, I'm used to say that Iranians have a, have a mystical, esoterical relationship with their history, you know. We, we, we cry when we, when we see the tomb of Sirius and we are a very specific people. <laughs> Um, Ali is saying it will be on his half scene table. Thank you so much, Ali Parande. Uh, it's a pleasure to read that, those comments. Uh, uh, I would love to have your feedback since you have ordered it. Uh, either uh, personally connect uh, on, on LinkedIn, since we are on LinkedIn. Uh, and also, if you like it, uh, I always welcome reviews. So uh, that will help uh, a lot if uh, any of uh, those who are listening right now have already read it uh, your reviews are uh, highly appreciated um, just to thank conclude, you, Ali, Ali. thank I'm you very sorry. much Ali. Um, maybe just to conclude uh, could you maybe uh, uh, recommend us to read uh, to read a book or uh, uh, a movie you like it recently it could be about business say or history anything you have uh, the full white card uh, green light I don't know how, how we say 
but uh, ab ab absolutely with know? pleasure so one of the things is that uh we read a lot of books or uh, articles or learn things on social media and we have more and more by the way the world is uh out there with a lot of uh, content so we are reading and learning or watching um uh videos and movies and learning what we don't often do is to put it in practice mm -hmm. now uh why uh it's because we only practice things when they become habits so there is a level and this is something that i have on uh spent uh these five ten minutes at, after all my workshops and, and speech sessions i am going in a short uh, version today is going from the learning to that habit is a certain things that needs to be done to transform this into habits mm -hmm. And a great book that I can recommend, which helps create how to create habits, mm -hmm. is Atomic Habits. Wow! It yes. Teaches, yeah, it teaches for anything how how we create habits. How how come? I mean, I can tell that uh, I walk every day, fast walk every day for one hour. It, it has been my habit in the past at least fifteen years. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it rains. I mean, I'm lucky I'm Southern California. It doesn't rain a lot, but, but still, even if it rains, I, I go under the rain and I, and I walk it because it has reached a situation where I don't, I, it's like, I miss something. It's like, I have, didn't have dinner. I, I, I can't go to bed without that. Uh, so, uh, creating that habit makes the difference. So there are a lot of great things in this uh, book about, uh, the habits that we can create learning from Cyrus, but until we don't apply them and we don't make them habits, they won't work. Atomic Habits is a book which helps them, helps us making these habits. Absolutely. From James Clear, I will, of course, share uh, in the in the in the blog article all the, all the link of Darius and also the, the, the link to, to this great book. Thank you so much, Darius Lautifa. It was a great, great pleasure and honor to have you. And I wanted to say also to people who are interested by B2B tech sale, uh, Darius is one of the heavyweight in this field. So you, you, are, you. you can trust him. He's one of the best on the planet. So you can trust him and train your people with him. He, he's, uh, he's maybe the best on this, on, this, on this game. Thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you, Ari. Thank you for having me.